in this uh, video uh, i'll be uh, i'll be talking about superconductivity and uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, I, i'll be i'll be discussing the basic physics that's involved in uh, in the process of superconductivity and all of uh, all of us are aware about uh, the uh, the outcomes uh, if we are able to to, to design uh, or manipulate uh, materials that can superconduct at room temperature, uh, they, they'll certainly uh, uh, revolutionize uh, uh, our lives uh, in all uh, uh, technological formats. Uh, so uh, in this video, uh, I'll be giving a, a brief introduction of uh, superconductivity. To start with, uh, this is the outline of my uh, my presentation. Uh, I'll give you uh, the introduction, uh, talk about the mechanism of superconductivity. Uh, Meissner effect is a, is a is a is a very important effect that 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 can explain uh, some properties of superconductors, uh, conventional superconductors. Uh, uh, and then there there are types of uh, superconductors, type one and type two. Uh, then some properties of superconductors. Uh, the, the very basic theory uh, that 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 explains uh, superconductivity in conventional uh, uh, materials, uh, metals, uh, and then then finally I'll conclude this talk with the, with the applications of superconductivity. So. Uh, it was an uh, accidental uh, discovery, uh, and uh, and as routine, Kamerling Ons was performing experiments on uh, on on materials uh, where uh, uh, he was calculating the, the conductivity of the materials at at the same time he was uh, decreasing the, the temperature of the system, uh, and uh, just. Uh, seeing how, what could have been the behavior of these materials uh, in terms of conductivity or, or resistance uh, as the as the temperature of system uh, was uh, was taken very very close to the absolute uh, zero temperature so uh, in his experiment in one of his experiments he he was uh, actually performing this uh, uh, this experiment of uh, uh, the behavior between uh, uh, what we call uh, resistance and temperature uh, in case of uh, mercury. And uh, you can see from this graph uh, the, that uh, you have a metal, you take down this, uh, the temperature of, this, uh, of the system and, and you check the resistance, uh, how, how resistance is responding at, at low temperatures. And to his surprise, uh, in 1909, uh, Kameling Ans, uh, he, he came across uh, a situation where he was performing the same experiment uh, on mercury. And, and, uh, and when he cooled down his system close to 4.2 Kelvin, uh, he observed a, a very sharp transition. He observed that, uh, that, that he couldn't uh, actually be in a position to measure the resistance of of mercury uh, the, the the resistance of mercury at uh, at that at 4.2 kelvin it was it was immeasurable it was it was like as if there's no resistance uh, in the conductor so this was the advent uh, when it was declared that 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 uh, there there are materials uh, preferably at that point of time it was mercury uh, it was observed that mercury uh, was showing uh, uh, a very strong transition when when it was taken uh, close to 4.2 kelvin and uh, and what was observed was that 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 it does not offer any resistance to uh, to the flow of current that means in other words that that, that this dc current uh, it could it, it could stay in the system in the conducting wire for long long time and certainly we can expect a lot of uh, technological applications from these materials so uh, 
so obvious it's quite obvious from the graph that when we saw the the, the behavior of uh, mercury with this uh, uh, in terms of its resistance and uh, temperature uh, certainly there, there's a phase transition uh, i mean at some point of temperature this material is uh, is showing a transition uh, from normal state to, uh, to the superconducting state so when this ma the material is same the atoms of the material are same all you are doing is uh, is is basically taking your system to very very low temperatures so when there is a phase transition in the superconductor uh, certainly we we expect that some of the properties of these superconductors uh, should change and uh, we observe that there are some other properties uh, which do not change when a normal metal goes from uh, uh, from normal state to the superconducting state so you can see here the, the properties that are not affected are elastic properties of these materials uh, the thermal expansion behavior it doesn't change the, fo the various photoelectric processes uh, so if you are applying some kind of uh, photoelectric effect on these materials even though they are in superconducting state uh, these uh, properties do not change and uh, preferably the structure the structure of the material uh, does not change when when you take uh, this uh, this metal from normal state uh, to to the superconducting state then there are the important things uh, that 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 really are important uh, for everybody to understand and there are certain things uh, that are that change when when this material goes from normal state to the superconducting state uh, the very first thing here is the magnetic properties of the, so the magnetic behavior of these materials uh, uh, shows the change there, there's change in the magnetic properties uh, of uh, of these materials uh, and uh, they show change in their electrical properties so uh, you can see that what is happening to the electrical properties we are not uh, able to measure uh, the resistivity of uh, of these uh, of these uh, materials when when current passes through them at at very very low temperatures and there there are changes in thermoelectric effects of uh, of these these materials all thermoelectric effects disappear when when we take down this uh, this uh, uh, this superconductor from its normal state uh, to, to the superconducting state. So, so the only means that we have here that we can put uh, a drag in our mind is that that we are just uh, taking uh, we are just taking the temperature down very very close to uh, to, to the lowest possible temperature. Uh, specific heats or, or they show discontinuous change and uh, some uh, some latent heat of the transition may also be involved uh, where we can find the changes that are occurring in the system when it moves from normal state uh, to the superconducting state now this is this is a very simple pictorial uh, representation available on internet you can see see uh, how we can differentiate a superconductor from a, a non superconductor uh, if i if i have a non superconductor uh, uh, in metallic state and i apply the magnetic field on it it penetrates through it even though i cool it down to very very low temperature uh, the magnetic field still penetrates in, in, into it but on the other hand, if I take an example of the, of the mercury, for example, so in case of mercury, when we cool down mercury to, uh, to a temperature close to 4.2 Kelvin, uh, we find that, uh, that, uh, that it, it expels the magnetic field that we are applying from the external. So this, uh, this kind of behavior, that uh, there is a change in the behavior of this uh, this material when, when we have taken it from normal state to, to the superconducting state this behavior uh, of expulsion of magnetic field from uh, from from this specimen uh, we call it meissner effect so 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 meissner effect uh, is something that that that's going to distinguish uh, a superconductor from uh, from a non superconductor from 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 a, from a conductor which does not go uh, to superconducting state at any of the available temperatures in the laboratory so this is what i was talking about uh, meissner effect so you you see that this uh, so so there is, at at the phase transition when we are suppose 
uh, suppose we, we, we take down the temperature and at some particular uh, temperature, the, the normal state of the metal uh, changes to the superconducting state. The temperature at, at which this transition takes place, we call this temperature as transition temperature and this transition temperature is Tc. Now you can see here, if you have uh, the magnetic field you are applying on a spe specimen and the temperature that is available to the specimen is greater than that of its uh, critical temperature. Uh, in this case, the magnetic field is penetrating into the specimen. But if you take the temperature down, uh, if you take it down to its critical temperature, what you see, you observe that the magnetic field that we are applying on it is expelled. So this expulsion, expulsion of magnetic field uh, from the specimen, uh, uh, this property is, is termed as Meissner effect. Now this this Meissner effect uh, becomes a basis to to, to classify uh, superconductivity. So what's that? Uh, we have two classes of uh, superconductors. One is called uh, type one superconductors. Uh, they are also called soft superconductors. Then we have uh, uh, type two superconductors. Uh, they are also called as hard uh, superconductors. Now what are these type 1 uh, superconductors? Uh, they, are, uh, they, they, they are actually, uh, they, they perfectly obey the Meissner effect, the, the effect that I was explaining in the previous, uh, previous slide. That means uh, that there is some sharp, uh, uh, there is some sharp expulsion of magnetic field at, at the temperature uh, below its critical temperature. So when, when, when we go down below to the critical tem temperature, uh, then the magnetic field that was, that was penetrating into the sample, uh, it, it, it's expelled. So where we have this sharp uh, transition uh, of uh, magnetism, this magnetic behavior, uh, we, uh, we refer such kinds of superconductors as type 1 superconductors, uh, or they are also called as uh, soft superconductors. Uh, so there are 30 pure metals which exhibit uh, zero resistivity at low temperatures. So we call them all as type 1 superconductors. Uh, so the superconductivity exists only below uh, their critical temperature. Or that, that's absolutely good. So once you take it uh, above the, the critical temperature, they lose their superconductivity. Now, this is the set of you. You can have a screenshot of it, and uh, these are the metals in which uh, which are type one superconductors, and uh, the critical temperatures for their superconductivity are shown in this slide. Now, the type two superconductors, uh, which, which I already told you, they are also called as hard superconductors. Uh, you can see the photograph here between the magnetization and the external magnetic field. You can see that th there is no sharp, uh, there is no sharp transition uh, of the, of the state of the superconductor of uh, uh, of these superconductors. Now, these hard superconductors, uh, uh, they, they they started coming in, coming in in reality in 1930s with the lead bismuth alloys. And uh, they exhibit superconductivity. They are called type two superconductors. Now, these superconductors uh, they have higher uh, ranges of critical magnetic fields. Now, critical magnetic fields should be understood in, in a similar way the way we understand uh, the, the critical temperature. So, uh, if I have uh, I have some sample in superconducting state, if I apply the magnetic field. On, on this material, uh, at some uh, critical magnetic field, it, this, uh, this 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 specimen can lose its magnetic uh, uh, can lose its uh, superconductivity. So 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 the the, the quantum of magne mag magnetic field that's applied, so that the the, the specimen loses its superconductivity, uh, that's called the critical field. Now here we can see that we don't have a sharp transition, we don't have a sharp critical field where the material will completely lose its uh, superconductivity. But there is, uh, there, there is a mixed state between BC1 and BC2. So the material is uh, it, it's, it's in a very, very complex state. 
uh, it's also called as vortex state of uh, superconductivity. So in hard superconductors, uh, we don't the, the Meissner effect is is not completely obeyed, um, and there is uh, the the specimen the material these materials which we call as hard superconductors they have a mixed state they have both superconducting and normal state between BC one and BC two. So the, this table is coding down some of the uh, some of the some of the materials which exhibit uh, the behavior of hard superconductors or type two super superconductors, and uh, you can see the, the transition temperatures and their critical fields at which these materials uh, these materials lose their superconductivity. Now, uh, these are some of the important points, these are some of the important properties of, uh, of superconductors, uh, like uh, temperature. So suppose uh, if, I, if, I have, uh, if I have a superconducting material, uh, I take it down, I take it below to its uh, critical, uh, critical temperature. Uh, and uh, if I take it below to its uh, critical temperature, it will expel the magnetic field that 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 we have uh, had applied on it uh, and uh, in certain cases uh, uh, you can uh, you can have a critical critical currents uh, suppose uh, the current flowing through a superconductor in its superconducting state will produce magnetic field so that magnetic field can itself destroy the superconductivity of of the superconductor, so so these are some of the uh, some of the mechanisms, some of the important properties that are linked uh, with, uh, with 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 these materials uh, which behave as superconductors below their critical temperatures. So you can see uh, the various parameters. Uh, the effect of temperature is there involved. Magnetic field is involved. Current is involved. Uh, stress is involved, the size of the material is involved, uh, the impurity that may be added to the material in order to enhance its uh, superconductivity, uh, uh, and 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 uh, the last one is the, is the isotopic uh, constitution of the specimen. I mean, you can have a different uh, different isotopes in the same specimen, right? And and it is found uh, experimentally that that this uh, isotopic mass. Uh, has a, has a relation with the critical temperature of the material, and this uh, relation between the isotopic mass uh, and the and the critical temperature we, we call it isotopic effect. Now, the conventional superconductivity, the superconductivity that we are talking here, uh, we are we are talking about the metals uh, that are uh, that are conventional superconductors, which obey Meissner's effect. Uh, uh, these uh, outcomes, uh, uh, where there is a transition of these materials from normal state uh, to the superconducting state, uh, it, it was it was it was purely explained by BCS theory, and we call it BCS theory of uh, of, of superconductivity. And and the pupil who who, who gave this theory, uh, they they were awarded Nobel, Nobel Prize for explaining the problem of superconductivity in conventional uh, superconductors. So uh, B was Bardeen and uh, C was uh, uh, Bardeen, Cooper and Schiffer. So these were the three guys uh, who, who came up with a very, very, uh, this theory is not a, 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 as simple as it, it looks here. It's a very, very uh, complex mathematical uh, way of doing it. Uh, and they could explain uh, the superconductivity in in con conventional uh, superconductors. So the idea is uh, the idea was that uh, that uh, that you you uh, at at some temperatures uh, certainly we understand here that that there is there is a transition temperature below which uh, the. The, the the conductivity of the material changes from normal conductivity to the superconductivity and so at these low temperatures uh, this theory comes up uh, with the postulates that that under certain circumstances uh, electron and electron uh, if we talk about uh, two electrons they have 
uh, they have the similar charges and they, they would never love to be in the same state. They will always uh, move away from each other uh, because of their charge. They have the same charge and uh, classically uh, understanding the, the problem of uh, two electrons is that they, they are going to repel with each other. They, they are never go, going to stay in the same state. Right? So, uh, here, uh, the, 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 the idea is that, that the electron that is moving in, in a crystal lattice, uh, it, 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 an electron, suppose an, an electron goes via a lattice state, uh, what it does, it interacts with the lattice. Then the, another electron uh, comes through the, through the same state and it also interacts with the lattice, but it, it interacts with a strained lattice. The, the, that lattice site was already strained by the first electron. And when these two electrons, under certain circumstances, uh, uh, come close to each other, uh, quantum mechanically, it cannot be, uh, there cannot be any physicality to, to represent it. So under certain circumstances, now one electron has gone through the lattice site, Another electron is gone through the same lattice side, but there is the, the, the difference of the two situations. Uh, the first one has strained it, and the second electron is going into the strained lattice. Now, this, this mediation, uh, so there, there is an interaction between electron uh, lattice and electron. So, electron phonon, electron interaction. This electron phonon, electron interaction. Uh, goes in such a way that the overall force between these two electrons exceeds the electrostatic repulsion between these two electrons. So what happens here uh, in this case is that the two electrons which, uh, which, which, which cannot uh, attract each other in, 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 in the classical domain, they, they come up in a state where, where, where they are bound to to, to, to make a pair because the, the net energy these two electrons make in this state is less than that of the normal electrons in the normal state. So, uh, so what is explained here by BCS theory is that, that there is electron phonon electron interaction. This electron phonon uh, electron interaction happens in such a way that the overall force between the two electrons uh, uh, becomes it exceeds the repulsion between the two electrons and this force is attractive force and this attractive force uh, comes in action because of uh, uh, because of the strained uh, lattice point uh, and now uh, the two electrons are forming a same state because uh, both of these electrons have a spin of half uh, so when they are making the same bcs uh, ground state uh, their overall spin is zero. Now these electrons, basically we, we, we fall these electrons uh, into a category of fermions. Now here, uh, when, when, when they are making the same BCS ground state, they are, uh, they are, uh, they are making, uh, they are making as a system, uh, as a boson. So we call it a boson. So it's, it's behaving like a boson uh, in this uh, superconducting state. So this is what I, what, what I was trying to tell you. So, so when you take down this to, to, to a temperature, very, very low temperature, so this Coulomb repulsion between the two electrons, uh, it becomes less uh, comparison to, to the attractive force. And see, the two electrons are bound with some binding energy, and that binding energy is nearly equal to 10 to the power of minus 3 electron volts. So, uh, if we have to kill the superconductivity of this material, uh, we have to apply an external energy to break this uh, uh, boson, to break this Cooper pair uh, into the normal state electron. So, so if we if we if we apply that energy, uh, which is feasible to break it. So, this, so uh, in this condition, the superconducting state of this uh, material will make a transition to the, to the normal state. So here another point is the electron in Cooper pair have opposite spins. So th this point I already talked about that the overall spin of this Cooper pair is, uh, is zero. 
So the, this, the overall system now, in terms of two electrons, which are bound together, uh, uh, this is behaving as boson. And uh, we, we, it, uh, superconductivity has super superconductors have tremendous ap applications. Uh, even though uh, uh, there are reports that that people have uh, developed materials which can conduct at room temperature, but but such things have not been commercialized till now. But superconductivity has already played a lot of role. Uh, its role in in forming the magnets of MRI machines, magnet resonance imaging it's it's uh, it is it is possible uh, because of superconductivity and and the magnets uh, there which are superconducting magnets I mean uh, so they, they are uh, they are made of uh, superconducting materials uh, superconducting uh, there are superconducting trains uh, there are there are there are lots of promising applications of superconductivity uh, of which we 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 find uh, we find no end. Certainly, it's it's gonna it's gonna bring uh, uh, a lot of transformation uh, in all formats of the societies in terms of uh, energy, in terms of saving energy, and uh, and all other parameters. So uh, so the, so uh, so the, the the research should always move on in the direction of search for the materials which can perfectly uh, superconduct uh, at at room temperature so when we will uh, we will go in a phase where uh, uh, where we where we uh, actually demonstrate and prepare the materials which can which can superconduct at room temperature that is certainly going to transform the lives of people all around, uh, all around the globe thank you